It's the Becky and Boca Show, coming to you live every Thursday night at 6 p.m. from glamorous downtown Boca Raton. I'll show you how to live life in style in one of the country's most elegant cities, nestled right along the beautiful Atlantic beaches between Palm Beach and Miami. So sit back, relax, and let me show you how to indulge yourself Boca style. I have Mark and Jennifer Bell, and I have Jillian Smath, who is the director of SOS Children's Villages. I'm sure anybody that has watched the news lately has seen what this Boca Power couple did for the kids from SOS Children's Villages during the hurricane. This is Jennifer and Mark Bell, and I want to welcome you to the Becky and Boca show. And I'm so excited that you came on because I've seen you everywhere. I, I Googled this story today and so many things came up. You've been, what, what networks have you been on? Everything, right? Everything. Well, first, thank you for having us today. It's great to be here. And we've been very lucky. Uh, the media has given SOS Florida an enormous amount of attention and they deserve it. I mean, Absolutely. Jillian's done an amazing job there. And these kids are amazing kids. And uh, we're thrilled to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And um, I just want to start talking about what happened and then you can join in and you can join in too Jillian it was the uh, Hurricane Irma and you were all comfortable in your house and <laughs> <laughs> you were in the uh, SOS villages I, home, I was right? actually um, I went to the village Monday morning okay after the storm ended I think the curfew was 10 a.m. but I knew that I had to go out to the village and just check out the, the damage and what you know our property looked like and I drove in about 8 30 and found a disaster. Um, you know, the streets, everything was still wet from the rain. The streets were um, covered with a ton of debris. We have a lot of trees on our streets, so mm -hmm. there was just debris everywhere. Sure. Tree, Big trees down, very unsafe. And, of course, you know, go into the office and flick on the lights, and there's no power. And on top of that, the city of Coconut Creek also had water restrictions. And how many kids did you have in that? Nobody was there at that time. They were in shelter. Friday oh, okay. evening okay. before the storm, we evacuated the kids because our hurricane plan says that if it's going to be a Category 2 storm or higher, that the kids go into shelter. So they okay. were safe in the shelter, but I was trying to figure out how I can get them out of the shelter as quickly as possible right. because it's not the most been scared pleasant too. environment and for them. And how old are these children? Our youngest is 2 and our oldest oh, is 18. Two. Oh, <laughs> that's quite a range. <laughs> yes. Okay, so they were all in a shelter together? Uh, we had half the village um, at Lions Creek Middle School, and we had the other half right down the street at Monarch High School. Okay. And they they were <clears throat> there since Friday. Um, you know, the storm was supposed to come, and then it kept slowing down, so it got, you know, kept getting dragged out. Um, they were, you know, not wanting to be there to begin with, so obviously my first goal was to get them out of shelter. Sure. And when I walked into the village at 8.30 and found no power and no water... Uh, my, my husband was with me, and I said, oh, my God, the kids just they can't come back right now. We have to get this place cleaned up and see what we can do to get the power on. So I um, went back to my home, started making some phone calls to find um, friends that can get in touch with FPNL to get our power back. And while I was in the midst of all of this, I get a call from one of my staff who says, they're closing the shelters. Oh. We have to leave. I said, what do you mean they're closing the shelters? Um, she said, everyone's packing up and and." Moving How out. are you even transporting all these kids? We have we have vans. Okay. So each of our homes, we have okay. 13 homes, and each of our homes does have a van. But we had moved the vans to protect them to the Coconut Creek Casino parking lot. So they had to run, oh. do runs to pick up the vans. And um, I said, well, can you buy some time? Like, the village is a mess. You, you can't come back here. And she said, well, I'll talk to the officer. I'll see what I can do. So I hung up the phone. I looked at my husband. I said, I, I don't know what to do. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I have to call Mark. Because Mark was literally the last person that I spoke to Friday evening <laughs> That's before what they were going to shelter. And he said to me, he said, the kids are going to be in shelter. You know, if they want to break at some point, maybe we can have them over for a couple hours. So I called Mark and I said, Mark, they're closing the shelters. The kids have to get out. I don't know what to do. And he said, um, okay, well, you're going to bring them here. And I said, really? He said, yeah, just give me about an hour. We have to get some things, you know, fixed around the house. Um, but you'll bring them here, and then we'll figure out what to do from there. So wow. that kind of, you know, set off a whole nother set of events. Um, and I, at that point, stayed at the village to start cleaning up because I wanted, you know, Mark's to bring them here. I'm thinking, you know, they'll go, they'll have lunch, they'll hang out a little bit, play. He has a, you know, nice video arcade room. They'll play for a while, and then hopefully I can get my contacts to get the power back on and get the property cleaned up, and we'll get them back here. So... 
Um, the kids got to Mark, and he can tell you what happened from there. Um, <laughs> but, no idea. you know, I'm, I'm with a group of people at the village. We're cleaning. We're raking. We're cutting down trees with chainsaws. And, you know, I'm looking at my watch, and I'm looking at my watch, and the power's not going back on, and it's 4 o'clock, and it's 4.30, and it's 5 o'clock. Oh. And, I, Mark, you know, back, back on the phone with Mark now, and he's like, well, they'll just sleep here. So, um, and, you know, it, so it just set off a whole series of, of events. And they, Mark and Jen were just amazing, amazing. They didn't leave, leave one stone unturned. They did everything possible to make the kids comfortable, to make them feel safe, um, to, uh, you know, accommodate my staff. And um, every, every morning um, I, I went into the village and I, I left a porch light on. So I, when I drove in, I hope it was that the lights yeah, were on. I've been there enough to go on. I've been there enough to go on. Just do a drive by. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Before you go back. Okay, Mark. If anybody doesn't know who Mark Bell is, he's um, pretty well known. He's a two time Tony Award winner for Jersey Boys in August Osage County. He's a venture capitalist. He's the CEO of Kibu Watches. He's done a million things. Just Google this guy if you don't know him. <laughs> it's incredible that in the spur of a moment, he just said, let me have all these kids, bring them to my house. I mean, most people wouldn't do that. It's very easy to write a check. It's much more difficult to open your home to 70 kids. I have two kids. <laughs> I know you have three kids of your own, and two of them were there that night and and Jennifer how did you feel about this I didn't think about it for a second um Jillian made the call and she's so incredible with these kids and who would ever want to have 70 kids and their house parents be without anything and they were going to be in their car they had no that. place to go and they'd be scared and they'd be and they're already living right you know they have anxiety every day and we didn't even think about it for a second Mark's like Jen I just got a call from Jillian can the kids come over? And I'm like, of course. Of course. But then we just, Mark and I... But not are, are, everybody would say that, that you're being it's, humble. Well, it's, 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 you <laughs> know what? That's the way we both are. It's not about writing the check like you say, which anyone can do. It's a matter of once you meet these kids and you go to the village, all these kids want us to feel safe. They're always yeah, living sure. in chaos. Of course. And they've already been living in chaos since Friday. Why make them still feel that way? So the minute they came into the house... They were just like, it was like almost like a sigh of relief for me to see them be at ease and then to see them walking in. And they were impressed by the house, of course, but all they wanted to do was take a shower. Yeah, get dry <laughs> and warm and take a shower. Imagine, and... they, I don't know if, I've never, I've never had to spend a night in the shelter. So I can't even imagine what it was like to be in the shelter for an entire weekend. Aww. So how long were they there? They went in about four o'clock Friday afternoon. And okay. then and this they was left Monday. around Monday, right? oh, Monday okay. 12, 12 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so what happened when they came into your house? <laughs> well, uh, they came on in. Uh, we uh, had them take off their shoes, and then we realized that four days in a shelter meant uh -oh. four days of no showers, oh, four days things. of no laundry, and you, know and you can like smell them all a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, they, and they all hadn't had anything to eat yet today, so uh -oh. we... we Figured, uh, we went for the we went for emergency food that would be pizza. And, uh, <laughs> was there anything open? Uh, there was. I think God, Renzo's was opened, and okay. we cleaned them out. We took tw <laughs> twenty pies, and they were awesome. <laughs> and uh, they're my favorite pizza place in town, and they were great. And they made them right away, and they got us the pies, uh -huh. and we fed the kids, and then we started a process of showering them, bathing them, and doing their laundry, Aww. and getting them all cleaned up. And that took uh, about twenty four hours. Do you have seventy day. beds in your house? I know you have a big <laughs> house, but. <laughs> What did you do about that? But they all had sleeping bags. Okay. So that was great. And um, we had some air know, mattresses. We had some air mattresses for the adults because they, they, they had parents with them, house parents, and the house parents' mom was with them too. And mm -hmm. we had some other refugees that were staying with us. And okay. uh, we uh, took care of everybody. And it was, uh, it was great. You know, over the course of three days, we cooked, we served 800 meals. We had uh, Bobby the Balloon Guy, Ziggy the Clown, <laughs> School of Rock all donated their services. But these kids didn't want to leave. Chad Everett, <laughs> Chad Everett. They did not. Yeah, they that did was not. Great. Funny story. Um, Tuesday afternoon, um, some of the older boys from the village came out to help us clean up. So there was uh -huh. so much that had to be cleaned up. And one of the boys looked at me and he said, Miss Jillian, just want to tell you that if the power goes back on, I'm cutting the wires. <laughs> you don't want to leave. <laughs> But we did still promise them a day at the pool because yes. the one thing we couldn't do was they couldn't go swimming because there was so much damage debris to the pool, and debris and everything. Sure. So they kept saying, can we go in the pool? Can we go in the pool? 
So we did promise them when we came back on Thursday that we would definitely have a pool day for them to all come back. And I know you were putting out messages on social media that mm. you wanted help from the community. Mm. Did anybody come and help you? It was, it, it, you know, that we talk about, it's called Esowitz Children's Village, and it takes a village. In this case, a village showed up. We had over 150 people from the community come and help us over 72 hours. It was amazing. They came from all over Boca. They came, people from we Miami. knew, people from all the way as far down as Miami, as far up as Palm Beach. Wow. People yeah. we knew, people we didn't know. And they just came and they helped. And, and you were telling me that some of these people, you still don't know who they were. No, they just it, came amazing. and worked and they we, didn't we, want any recognition. They didn't want anything. Nobody was, there. of course, you had the, some people come just for the selfie and they left. Yeah. But a lot of people really did work. There were people out there who really, people like Darcy Newman, who was there from morning till night every and, day. Uh, and Barry Newman. And, you know, people were there all, all the time helping, doing everything. Everything from taking out garbage to helping us with laundry. Um, you know, our kids, David and Rachel, were helping us all 24-7 with everything. Everybody chipped in. Everybody helped. Nobody asked for anything. And even we were offered it. People were bringing food and bringing stuff. And we offered to help pay them back. And they said, no, no, it's a gift. Oh, but we don't, see? We don't, we don't, we're not looking for anything. And people were like, someone bought dinner from Mangiano's from everybody. Wow. And uh, we had dinner from uh, Chinese one night. We had, uh, you know, they, it was nonstop food. It was like, it was like being on a cruise ship. Uh, for these kids, those kids didn't want to leave. <laughs> and, you know. But it's amazing how many you know you you know we have three children. Mm -hmm. Everyone has like you know three, four, you know some two. But imagine seventy kids no, I <laughs> to feed and entertain, and so we're entertaining right. them from two. You know, and the two year olds want to watch TV oh, and you do had something little two -year -olds different. Too, I forgot about right. that. Oh, and yeah. they, they were you know they were you know of course the cutest but then you have the older boys that have to they have all this Isn't energy yeah. right. so we sure. had one of our friends that saw us on facebook don't even know who could, couldn't even tell you their names he was an ex-football player came out did f drills with the boys on the football fields we had our country club woodfield come out help us with ice chicken fingers french fries right. had a few of their people come over and just play games with these kids, just have organized events so these kids were, weren't getting bored in the house. Right. It's hard to entertain kids, was, especially yeah. with a mix of ages. Right. It, it was great. It was non stop We had an NBA player come play basketball oh. with the boys. We had, you know, and people kept calling. And was, so many people, and we felt bad because we couldn't respond to everybody offering to help. And people just show up. And it was like, there was some guy in my kitchen standing next to me. And I go to him, <laughs> who are you? And he tells me his name. I'm like, where are you from? He's like, oh, I saw the post. Do I know you? He goes, no. And he literally wow. was, he was helping me clean up stuff. And I was like, you're awesome. And I'm like, and he, then he left. And we, we have no idea who he was. And just this nice guy. And there was like some woman helping us do dishes. We have no idea who she was. And all day long, people came and went. They came from 8.30 in the morning to 11.30 at night. Uh, every and day. I, and I think when they got there, they didn't know what to expect. They're like, oh, it's Mark Bell's house, let's just say. And then they meet these children. Mm -hmm. And they are so well behaved. Aww. They are so respectful. They are delicious. And I think that we all felt like what they needed from us, we all in our community needed from them. Sure. Because they just you wanted to get more out of it than we, they do, we, actually. Exactly. They yeah. just wanted they just wanted attention and to be held and just to be appreciated and, and it and they wanted someone to show up. So I always say to my friends, you saw them that day, but now I want you yeah, to keep going. Yeah, don't let it going. just be a one-time thing. Exactly. Keep going to the village, go to the village, see the village, be a part of their lives so they feel like there's somebody there for them. Because they can count Jillian on. works hard and all of her staff works really hard, but they need, everybody needs help at all at some time, so. Yeah. Can I ask you, Jillian, how do these um, kids end up in this um, particular village? I mean, what is, the, what is their circumstance? So what we do is we provide um, care residential care, so they're living with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to children that are in the foster care system. Okay. It, mostly in Broward County. We do have a p couple of P Palm Beach County kids as well. But these are kids that um, have been removed from their home. It's been, you know, deemed an unsafe environment for a variety of reasons. Okay. So they're removed, um, and then the kids are placed with us. And they're with us until um, the court tells us differently. So each one of our families that come in has a different case plan, depending on what the issues are. Okay. Uh, so they've been removed from their homes? They've been removed from their okay. homes, right. Okay. Um, and one of the things that we focus on, um, oftentimes in the foster care system, siblings are separated. So now think about it. So you're mm. a, a young kid, you go oh. through this trauma of someone, co someone coming into your home and taking you away from mom and dad, and then you're then faced with possibly being separated from your brothers and sisters. So oh, that's our goal is to 
eliminate that second trauma. So you keep them together. So we keep siblings oh, together. Um, so we have a lot, a lot of large sibling groups. Um, you know, okay. most foster parents in their homes in the community, they you know want to help. They want to take one child, maybe two. Um, people are not really able um, or sometimes willing to take four, five, six kids, seven sure. kids, eight kids. You know, we've had a sibling group of eight has been our largest. Oh wow! So our goal is to keep them together and provide them with an opportunity to be a kid and get some stability, get some care, get some therapeutic intervention while their families are going through the same thing. So do they eventually go back to their families? Some of them do. It okay. really depends on um, the family. So a All lot right. of times we see parents that are very motivated. Um, oftentimes these are people that grew up in similar situations, so they don't know any different. They don't know how to be a parent or they're right. facing some really difficult challenges, substance abuse, domestic violence. Sure. So we help them get services and if they are serious and they they you know go to their therapies and they participate in their parenting classes and they come for their visits and they're you know taking feedback and, and, and applying what what they're being taught then they can get their kids back um, there are others that can't do that you know they, they try but they're just not successful So some of these kids stay there indefinitely so some of the kids will stay with us um, until they are ready to move out on their own um, what age is that uh, typically 18. Okay. Um, we have, so at 18, um, kids are um, kind of exiting the foster care system. They can go into what's called extended foster care through age 21. Um, okay. But we um, allow them to remain on our campus until they complete high school. And then we have a secondary program where I have three staff that are dedicated just to those 18 and older. Oh, so it and is within the same system. It, it, for us, it is. That's, okay. that's okay. A, um, a, a program that we run on our own. It's not state funded. Um, wow. We seek some private grants for that. But we continue to work with them because we know that at 18, they're really not ready to no, be I have two sons. 18 is not. You <laughs> can't just throw somebody out <laughs> right. at 18 and expect them to. So we oh. continue to work with them. So we have, um, you know, about 70 kids on our campus on any given day, 18 and younger and then we have a secondary program of about another 80 young adults between the ages of 18 and the oldest right now is about 37 and people say to me what do you mean you work with a 37 year old and it's not that we're working with that 37 year old it's that that 37 year old grew up in our village yeah. and he's part of our family um, because most of the kids who are staying with us till 17 or 18 they don't have family you know that that has been um, their parent parental rights have been terminated so they need it more than, okay. than others and we continue to you know um, see them through and so at, at 37 it's not that we're giving him any services but if something great happens he calls us because we're his family, his family. Right. Oh. you know or if it's the holidays he comes by because oh, we're sure. his family so um, so we have about 150 um, children and young adults that we're working with at any given time that's fantastic and mark how did you get involved with this charity because this is not one of the more well-known charities in Boca Raton. I mean, I could name right. like 10 or 20 right off the bat, but not SOS, but I think it's probably one of the most important ones. So it's uh, about 10 years ago, a neighbor of mine asked me to go down and they were doing a carnival, a street fair, and asked if I would contribute a little bit and come down to the street fair and see the place. Mm -hmm. And it was like a, a weekend. So I said, sure. And, you know, they re he rented a bunch of bounce houses and I'd go down. And so I went for an hour and I saw it and I was like, okay, it's kind of neat. And, you know, I was obviously on a lot of boards and do a lot of philanthropic stuff and kind of put it in the back of my head and, and that was it. And then five years ago, I was turning 45 and I wanted to do something for my birthday and I didn't want to do a party. And I wanted mm -hmm. to do something for somebody else. Aww. And then I remember the, and my birthday, I was lucky, happened to fall on a Saturday. And I'm a big fan of Disney. And so I decided, you know, I really want to go to Disney World for my birthday. I think it'd be kind of fun. And then, but I don't want to go by myself, just with my family. <laughs> and so I called up the SOS and I said, hey, you know what? I love to take all these kids to all Disney World, all of them, <laughs> to Disney World on my actual birthday as a present to me. Oh. And so we chartered a bunch of buses and drove everybody up when it ended up being a magical day I'm for all of us. I'm getting teared up. Yeah. This is really And amazing. it was great. It was just oh. a, uh, they got to do all every ride in all four parks in one day. <laughs> in all four parks. We made some special arrangements for You must have been Disney. exhausted. Yeah, yeah we, made some, but I, we broke them into groups. And I got to spend time with all these kids. So I get, my goal was to spend an hour with each with group, each group over the so course of the day, them. so I get to know them. And our mm -hmm. kids and too. We wanted and our kids. Right. We wanted our kids also to see that there, there's there's no difference between our kids 
and them, it's just a matter of who their parent, you know, how they were brought yeah, up. Yeah, what so, happened? Exactly. We're, we're all situation. people at the end of the day. Exactly. We're all the same. Mm-hmm. And um, but it's great. They were they were so they were just amazing. I fell in love with them. And they must I, love you. And uh, <laughs> taking them all to great. Disney. And I was lucky enough to Aww. get invited to were join. Were you on this trip? I was not on the trip. Okay. Um, I didn't go on the actual trip, but I was I was a part of the agency, so helped with planning right. it and putting the groups together and all Fantastic. that. And so I was lucky enough to ask. But I heard it was amazing. It was fun. <laughs> it was <laughs> great. It was great. I had a blast. It was, and it was, it was, the most touching part was I found out there was some girl, it was her 16th birthday, and she'd never had a birthday party oh. before. And so at, so at dinner, we surprised her with a big cake, and when, it, when everyone thought they were going to be wishing me happy birthday, Aww. I asked if she would come with me for a second, and the cake had her name on it, and we oh surprised my gosh. her. And, oh, she was in tears. <laughs> I love in tears. Crying. <laughs> I was just, it was Aww. so touching. Everyone and saying happy fish. birthday to her. And, uh, and then I was lucky enough to join the board, and... Uh, just fell in love mm. with the place and fell in love with well, uh, everything lucky about it. Well, they're to have you and you too, Jennifer. Yeah. I mean, a lot of wives would have said, oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bringing <laughs> 70 kids in here. But, that, oh, that's amazing. And I know... You're going to ask our community to help also because now that everyone knows the story, and if you haven't seen it, you're living under a rock because <laughs> it has been everywhere. So um, maybe we'll wait until after the break to talk about how they can help. But tell great. me a little bit more about when they were at your house. How long were they there for? They were there for 72 hours. Okay. And then, <laughs> what, and did you take and, a long nap and, after and, that? Actually, it was, it was very funny. So we went to bed Thursday night after they left. When we woke up Friday morning, we were all depressed because they weren't they there. Weren't there. It, was and it, it was like our family was disappeared, so we went down oh. to the village to go see them. Oh, and the kids like jumped into our arms, yeah. and it was it was so sweet. It was just like it, it's like what Jillian says. It's like you can never leave there because it is like family, and, and once you really take time to get to know these kids, they become part of your family, and that's what really spending seventy two hours with somebody makes you really connect with them and sure. we've all really all connected so and as a parent i'm sure you know you feel like you know you can give to them something that they're lacking which yeah. is probably the most important part anyone not even being a parent but any right. any any person we have a friend who um the next day didn't even know that she was going to be there and she's a girl she's my best friend and she's a little rough around the edges and she fell in love and oh. i go why are you here she goes because i pinky promised her I'd show up. Oh. And I was like, what? And so she goes, yeah. And she had no clue that I was going to be there. She just showed up on uh. her own. And then she said to her, the little girl, she goes, well, if you do well in school this week, we're going to have an ice cream party for you guys on Saturday. Oh, and, wow. And so it's just a matter of, and I said to my girlfriend, I'm like, you know, you she needed you, but you needed her just as much. Well, probably more. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's just, a, you know, if you, it's one thing, to, like you said, to write a check, but to go to the village and to see the great job that Jillian and her staff has done, it's gonna, it, will, it will change anybody. And that's like the most important message that at least we want to get across. It's just how important this village is. And you would never know that it was, fo- it was a foster kids. It's, it's a regular block. Mm. So they have, a, they can walk to school. They can invite friends over Aww. to their homes. So it's not like they feel like they're living right. in foster care. Right. Mm-hmm. And what people don't realize is, you know, these kids are our future. I mean, Absolutely. they're, they're going to be doctors, lawyers. Uh, who knows? The next president could be sitting in there. And they right. need mentors, yeah. too. Yeah. People exactly. can come and meet them and tell them what they do and show them the different career options. That all helps. It's amazing to see what these kids have, how some of these kids over the years have grown up to be as adults and how successful some of them become as adults because of SOS. Yeah, and they we have are really, really good outcomes with our kids. Um, one of the things that we really focus that. on and, and instill in our kids is education, right? Because as a parent, mm-hmm. that's like the most important thing. Yep. You can't do anything without it. You, right. you may have had a bad start. You may have, you know, um, you know, come into the foster care system. Your your family has some dysfunction and has some challenges, but education can change all of that. So we really push that and instill that in our kids. We have a tutoring company that comes out four days a week and goes into each home an hour and a half twice a week to make sure nice. that the kids are learning study skills, that they're, you know, reading on grade level, that their math is up to, you know, speed. Um, and for the past 10 years, 100% of our kids that are supposed to graduate high school are graduating. Oh. And 100% wow. are going on to some form of secondary. 100%? Yeah. Wow. Mostly college. We do have a couple that end up going to some trade schools and mm-hmm. stuff, but 100% are continuing on that education. And that's something that we're really proud of because if you look at the statistics for foster care kids, they're really low. Um, less than half of the kids actually graduate from high school. Um, wow. And even 
typical kids, you know, that are growing up in their families. There, I, the last statistic I saw was only like 40% went on to secondary education. Wow. So yours so, are not only graduating from high school, they're also going on to college or some sort of a yeah. trade school or something like that. Yep. So you're really setting them up for the rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. Yep. That's amazing. So proud of you. Yeah. That's it. What a, what a great career. <laughs> <career. laughs> you know, we, like yeah, you know it's anything. very funny because, you know, Mark and I got a lot of the attention because we did open up our homes and not a lot of people would do that. Absolutely. But Jillian and her she's staff. She's the everyday hero. She's yeah. the everyday hero. Yeah. And she's the one the, that doesn't get noticed. Jillian and her true. staff are the real heroes. Right. You know, yeah. and, all the, and they're the real heroes in this whole story. And, you know, the people who help us, because remember, the state only gives us 50% of what we need to house, feed, and clothe these children. Oh, my goodness. Everything else comes from the generosity of the community. Of the community. And if it wasn't for that money, they wouldn't exist. Wow. And, uh, and, you know, but if you look at what we're doing, what Jillian's doing, uh, you know, we're beating all the odds, beating all the national averages, Absolutely. beating everything, creating, taking these kids, and they're, the kids, children are our future. I mean, they're, they sure are. You know, that's the future. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to go to break here in a second. And after the break, we're going to tell everybody how they can help. Because anybody that heard this story <laughs> is feeling like, well, gosh, I can do something. And there's something everyone can do. Yes. Absolutely. And we're okay. going to talk about now how the community can help. Because I know we have a lot of local people watching this. And if you live in Boca Raton, you know there's so many charities that get a lot of attention. And this one might not be known by everybody, but this is one where people can... Donate money, donate time, be a mentor to these children. It's really, I, I remember once um, my kids were in Gulfstream school and it was a graduation ceremony and the principal said uh, something like, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it, our kids think that they really need us, but the truth is that we really need them. So having a relationship with a child is incredible. It's probably the best thing you can do. And like you said, Mark, these are our future. This is our future. So if you can have an imprint on some child that needs a parental figure at a time like this, I just think that's a fantastic thing. Listen, uh, it, there's so many ways people can help SOS. Uh, I'll talk about some of it. Jillian will talk about some of it. You know, first and foremost is we need money. Cash. <clears throat> it, it's a fact. You know, mm -hmm. we get these kids. The state gives us half of what we need. These kids, we get, and we, remember, we we may have different kids a week from now than we have today. Right. So we may get socks and underwear and T-shirts today. They'll go to kids. They leave. And then a week from now, we get new kids. We need the same problem. So you have to and have money to go and buy these things to, exactly. to fit the kids. So we have our own web website, yeah, SOSFlorida.com. Fund... Okay, go ahead. And we have a GoFundMe page, GoFundMe.com backslash SOS Irma. And we set that up just for the storm. And then we also have our SOS Florida dot com um either way is a great way to donate and uh, if you can't help out uh with with give, with things we need or with your time you know, we never say no to money right. and uh and i'll let julian talk about other things way people can donate but please if you if you're listening to this and you have the ability to donate five dollars ten dollars right because sometimes amount. these Every, go fund out. me accounts <clears throat> people send in ten dollars and it turns into a huge Listen, if, 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 if a million people if a million yeah. people give a dollar, it's a million right. dollars. One of our friends up in New York who is a single mom with two kids, doesn't have a lot of money, lives paycheck to paycheck. She donated fifty dollars. And she said, Look, if I just don't buy coffee for the week, mm -hmm. she goes, If I can help back and that's all it is. You're not we're not asking for a, a lot of money. We're just wanting to inspire. But we'll take people. a lot of money. Don't get yeah. it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll <laughs> take a lot of money. We have our good book of people yeah. out there that can help yeah. a lot. Yeah. Right. Whatever you spend the New York Prime, you can match with us and we'll be okay with that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one dinner out. How about that? Everybody gives up one dinner out. That's a spectacular a, idea. Yeah. Something you, you know, as simple as that. For us, we have our, our budget is about three point eight million dollars a year. Um, we get about half of that from the state. Oh wow! Okay. So we have about one point six million dollars to raise every oh. year, and then on top of it, you have these you know situations like Irma that just add additional expenses that were not budgeted for, that were not planned for. So you know, and then the other thing is it resets every year. So we're in a January to December oh, wow. fiscal year. So, you know, we're doing really well. We're close to reaching our $1.6 million goal of fundraising, but guess what? It's October next week, right? So um, two more months, we're gonna hit restart again. And mm. We're gonna have another $1.6 million to raise. So oh it's, you know, it's, it's always, <laughs> It's a constant. It's a constant. And, and unfortunately, most people, you know, you have the people can relate to cancer. People can relate to right. heart disease. As adults, there's lots of diseases and things that we can relate to that will go to the big charities up 
at the Breakers or the resort. Mm-hmm. And um, but you know, nobody thinks about kids. Nobody thinks about homeless kids because you don't see them on the streets. Right. You We're don't see, isolated you, you, in Boca Raton. Right. That sort we of live thing. in a bubble, and right. people don't people don't see them walking around. But they're there, and mm-hmm. they need help. And they don't have a voice, and you know it's not like they're running around asking for money. Right. And um, but they need money, and this is your, you know, thanks to your show and things like this, we're able to go on and reach the community, mm-hmm. and ask for help and ask for support. And they can go to our GoFundMe page, which is at SOS Irma and GoFundMe. I'm going to put that on my Facebook page. So. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And You're they can go to our, or they go to our own website. Right. But you know, we're looking for people to give big and small. We're looking for people to get involved. We're looking for people to join the board who really want to get involved. We're looking for uh, people, you know, there's so many ways people can get involved. But, you know, uh, and, and money is definitely first and foremost. And then people's time. Time is the most time. valuable commodity mm-hmm. we all have. To make a connection with the kid. Right. And if I can say something, we invited a lot of our friends to the gala that, we, that they host every year in I- April it is. Yes. And my girlfriend said to me, wow, I didn't know it was for the Children's Village. I just went to the gala because you invited me to a gala. Right. So no one really knows about this village. And so um, I feel bad that we got hit with this hurricane and it did affect a lot of people and people lost their lives. But if we can get the word out about these about SOS Children's Village, then something good came out of something right. bad. Right. And people in town have been very generous. Like Boca West has been super generous with us. You know, uh, we just had a, a donor out of nowhere, Rob Fendizio and his wife Kyle from Therapeutics MD just gave us a lot of money. So, you know, we get people from all over the community, the Country Club Manners Association. Uh, did I get that right, Jillian? The Con- um, CM- CMAA. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Whatever it, yeah. it is, they're very, very Managers involved. Association yeah. of America. America. Okay. Thank okay. you. They've been very generous with us. So, you know, we do, we do have support, a lot of support here in Boga. Don't get me wrong, but we need a lot more. And, but without those people, we'd be nowhere. Right. And we're very grateful to them. And, well, um, I think you but, two have done a lot to help these these kids. I think you're going to see a real influx. Yeah, we've so, seen a lot of people the past week. Census. You know, while all the volunteers were showing up at Mark and Jen's house at the village, we put up a post on our Facebook page that we needed help with cleaning up and oh. restocking refrigerators. You know, everyone, you know, I lost power in my house personally, so I had to restock my fridge. Mm-hmm. But we had 13 houses that needed so there's 13 houses in this uh, one block area? Is yeah, that like, it's, it's like a cul-de-sac. Community? Oh, how nice. So it's, 13, it's 15 nice. buildings, 13 houses, two administrative buildings. And while the 100-plus people were showing up at Mark and Jen's house, we had the same thing in the village. Um, we had Aww. every morning, there were just cars pouring in. There were teenagers getting out of the car ready to, you know, rake and help. And there were parents that were coming, fill, their trunks filled with um, milk and eggs and bread and oh. tater tots and ice cream and you know um, <laughs> what, Thursday morning we had a guy um, he owns a company called the Bin Doctor um, he came out and sanitized 37 oh, recycle wow. bins and garbage cans because think about it we lost power all the we dumped out all the food there. and it was sitting there and we had maggots uh. and you know again so when people ask about like what does it what cost can you do? like how do you do so the money is important but but the support is important too so, you know, the guy that came and, and cleaned the bins out, he gave us a very steep discount. The people that came and, you know, brought the food, they, they obviously they spent the money to buy the food, but they took the time and they went right. and they shopped. They went and shopped. That saved my staff from having to go to the exactly. store and, you know, and think about right. that. The people that came and, you know, did the lawn work. And that, and so that was helpful for the hurricane, but we need that all the time. So, you know, when you stop and you think, what does it take to run a home? And we have 13 of them. You know, we need that kind of, you know, help all the time. So if people can't write us a check, because some people can't, Mm -hmm. um, we have a volunteer program. How does that work? If someone wants to do that, what what does that entail? So they can go onto our website. There is a link that says, I'm interested in volunteering. They can click that. And um, there's different ways that they can volunteer. Sometimes we have projects and we just need need people to come out and help us, you know, run a a graduation party. Or we have people that say, you know, I really want a little bit more of an intimate relationship, a one-on-one relationship with a child. They can be a mentor. So oh, we do have so a home mentorship program. That's nice. Um, okay. Yep. Um, people say, um, I want to host an ice cream party for the kids or a movie night on Friday night. You know, we do have a community center. It's like a large building mm-hmm. that we can do, um, do different things in. Um, we have people that are yoga instructors, and they come out and run a yoga class Wednesday nights with the kids. We have a woman um, from Broca West Country Club. She's an artist. She comes out and works with a small group of girls and is teaching them how to paint. Um, so, I mean, anything and everything, because wow. it does take a village. I right, mean, right. We are raising sure. 70 kids, and, you sure. know, we do have house parents. We have live-in house parents, but typically it's one person 
with six kids in their home. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. I yeah. have two kids and I am. <laughs> I have two kids too. I know. You know, I'm good. Right. So, you know, they, they, all of these people lend that support, lend that helping hand to our house staff, and it really does make a difference. Oh, I'm sure it does. And I saw on your website you have events coming up. We do. What's the so, next one? Um, as part of our um, uh, fundraising plan, we run two events each year. Jen mentioned the gala, which is in April every year. But we have on November 4th, we have a 5K run walk. Um, it's called Steps for SOS. Um, there is a website, stepsforsos.org. You can go up uh, onto the website. You can m- make a team. Um, we're asking people to make teams, get people to, to join their teams, do some fundraising. It's really fun. It's at Tradewinds Park. Um, we have oh, a whole bunch of um, you know vendors that come out and set up booths. Um, we have um, a DJ that comes um, and you know plays music for everybody. There was a performance last year where some kids danced. Oh. It's just a really fun morning. Yeah. Um, very family oriented event. People brought their pets. We had dogs walking. <laughs> um, so um, we have a, a goal for that event of raising $100,000. Um, so again, stepsforsos.org. People can go on and join to make their team, join another team, um, get their friends involved, get their neighbors involved. Um, we'd love to, you know, have as many people as possible. I think we had about 500 people last year, so if we can oh, double that this year. That would be great. I'm yeah. feeling this year it might yeah. be double. Really yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> that is so nice. Yeah. Now you two again, take me back to when they were in your house. You didn't hesitate at all. I hear you just like. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah, yeah, we got the call. She asked, and we said, okay. We first made sure we had, uh, we ordered food, and again, they didn't accept credit cards. So we had one of our friends drive to go get 20 pizza pies. We had some folding tables. We scrounged around the house looking for any chairs that we could find so the kids could eat. All the Gatorade, water, water, ice that we had left over that we didn't thankfully need for the hurricane. And then we you didn't lose power. At we your didn't house. lose power. Okay. So then we said, okay, let's put them all in the arcade. And we have I mean, a lot what of. What kid wouldn't want that? <laughs> well, right, but when you're two years old, so we oh, went yeah. upstairs and we have a playroom. Oh, you had the little ones. So we had all the little ones. So we brought down all like the little dolls and the Barbie dolls <gasps> and little things. And then we set up. We decided that the little girls might want manicures. So oh, how cute! We did manicures and we did pedicures for the house parents. Aww. And then we had then what we called everyone we knew. Party Perfect was. A really right. big help because they helped us find entertainment. We had an ice cream truck. Oh, oh wow. Uh, Chad from Viboga got us an ice cream truck. Uh, oh. a- Angela Spera and uh, Teresa Anderson got us entertainment. And uh, everybody chipped in from the community. It was a, it really was, all we did was just start it, uh, start it off by yeah. saying, come over. And we posted yeah, but it on that's Facebook. The biggest thing. But it was everybody else who did everything to really make it happen. I mean, we give a lot of credit to our friends and neighbors and the, the amount of time they worked. And uh, I know I keep giving shout outs, but all these people deserve it. Right. And yeah. I remember I the know. next morning, one of our friends from Miami, they, they had showed up on Monday and I get a phone call at 7.30 in the morning and Adrian and Vanessa Lance, because right. I do want to oh, give yeah. them a shout out, were the first people to show up from Miami the next morning. Right. And wow. they didn't have to, they just showed up. And, and it wasn't like people were there for just a social gathering, sorry. <coughs> they were there to really work. Right. And really help. So it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. People were great. It was a great, you know, the, the community really came together. Boca really, you know, we talked about, some people talk about doing, and some people always yeah. say what they're going to do. In this <clears throat> case, Boca did. And we're very proud of Boca Raton. Well, I think they can continue that. And uh, anybody yeah. listening to this or watching, um, so who, if someone wanted to help, they call you? Or <laughs> well, who, how do they, they can, <laughs> what's the next step? You're welcome to call the show if you yeah. want to. <laughs> <laughs> we can, oh, we ha- okay, you want to do a call in? 888-565-1470 if anyone wants to call in. We can take your call. Oh. And, uh, okay, so if someone's out here and they want to get involved. Get involved. So they can visit our website. website? There are some directions The website that. is? At www.sosflorida.com. SOSflorida.com. Or okay. they can call in to the village, 954-420-5030. Uh, they can just explain why they're calling, and, set, and then they'll get passed on to the right person. Okay, and then we have the GoFundMe account. That's gofundme.com slash SOSIRMA. And you have another... Uh... That's enough. That's okay, it. That'll, that'll get you there. Yeah, I get it, <laughs> if you want to call in right now, the number is 888-565-1470. We can take your call on air. So you've been working with this charity for 10 years? Five said? years. No, five years. Okay. And uh, I suppose it's probably one of the most rewarding things you've ever done. And yeah, you have a very uh, 
colorful career. You've done a lot of things. Is this probably <laughs> one of your... Uh... You know, this is probably one of the most gratifying. Cause see? You, you get to see these kids grow up. Mm -hmm. You get to get to know them. Um, you know, your, your, your goal here is to see them grow up to be fully functioning, productive adults right. who have normal lives. Right. And that's how you can... That's success. Absolutely. And it's great how we these kids, all these kids, great kids graduate high school, go on to school afterwards, and become self sufficient. It's what we want for all of our children. Sure, we want our own children. It's just like what, yeah, you know, the same thing we want for our kids. We want for them, mm -hmm. and that's the great thing about it. Is they are they have the same opportunities in life going forward, and uh, it's great. It's just great to watch. Yeah, and in, in your statistics there with a hundred percent, getting out there. That's amazing. And we're, and we're really starting now to see. Um, you know, a lot of kids graduate college. A lot of them are coming back, and they want to help. Um, so the ones that were that's there. the most rewarding yeah. thing when you have a, uh, an adult. I always call them kids because to me they're always kids. <laughs> yeah, but you have an adult that went through our program, <laughs> and they come back and they say, "What can we do to help the kids that are living there now?" Last year, um, I think it was spring break. We have a couple of boys that are in college playing football. And uh, three of them got together on spring break and called us and said, get the, get the guys together. We're coming out to run a football clinic. Totally unsolicited. They came up with this wow. idea on their own. And they, for, you know, three, four hours, we have a field in the back of our property. They took them out back. They were teaching them football. They were talking to them about appreciating what they have at the village and working hard and getting into college because um, they did it and, and they were able to share that experience with them. So... You know that's priceless. I mean, right, a role you know, model. We, we, we cannot, you know, script that stuff. So that's absolutely really, um, amazing to see. Absolutely, and it's amazing how many uh, Facebook messages I've gotten from people that have been in the foster care system. Oh, really? Okay. It, it, it's just an outpour of you know them thanking us, and one saying, you know, this one woman was like, you know, I I was became successful. My brother's unfortunately, you know, incarcerated. So it's just the amazing amount of attention because no one really wants to talk about foster kids. They don't vote. And just to get the word out about right. the village and about these kids so they have a voice because Jillian can speak a lot, but she can't speak every day. So it, it was a good thing that this was now able to get into the public and for people to realize that they can help in yeah. so many ways. We always say we're like the best kept secret. And that's I know. Like, you know, we, we don't want that. You know? right. um, no longer. So. No, no longer a secret. No, 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 I think, <laughs> I think, I think it is up. So. You called the wrong person for that one. <laughs> wow. So, Jennifer, I, I'm amazed with you, too, because, you know, a lot of women in Boco say 70 kids come to the house. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I fell in love with them. I remember putting the ones, uh, the younger ones down for bed, and I love Hello Kitty, and they Aww. all wanted Hello Kitty. So I took out this big Hello Kitty stand, I did a Hello Kitty night light, because they were all sleeping in a shelter, they were scared. Sure, and there was a hurricane. Was, there was a hurricane, Storm. and here now they're in this strange person's house, and so I went into my Hello Kitty collection, and I gave them each a Hello Kitty to sleep with, because I just wanted them to, and it was just really, it was just a, a touching moment for me, to know that all they wanted to, all and all our kids wanted to be was held, and sure, you know that's all these kids wanted was to feel safe. And I always right. made the comment that even though the hurricane's over, there's still a hurricane with these kids, right? Because there's still a lot of changes. It's every day, and it's just knowing that if you, if I say I'm going to come to the village, I'm coming to the village. A dependable person, right. exactly. Too, yeah. That's all that they need, right? And Jillian's been there for 20 somewhat years. 20. Wow. Yeah, August yeah. was 20 years. Yeah. Wow. So you don't you, look old enough to have been there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so she, you know, I'm. Um, she's. T you know, I'm learning by her example of what it takes to just to show up for these kids and what an to amazing job to stick around. Right. To have something solid and, in their lives exactly. that continues, and that probably means so much to these kids. Yeah. To have somebody that they know has an interest in them. You know, most of them have always been let down by adults. You know, mm -hmm. not necessarily on purpose. Again, I, I, I um, so many of the parents that we see, they were they were in similar situations. But, you know, they have been let down. Um, so for them to see adults, most of whom they don't know, that actually come through and are there to take care of them, it, it, it just is so meaningful for them. It just leaves such an impression on them. Mm -hmm. And it changes their view of what you know uh, who adults are sure um, and that people do care about them um, that there really are people out there that 
want to help them and want them to succeed and, and want to wrap their arms around that uh, around them and and make sure that that they just have. someone to tell a kid that they're proud of them can Absolutely. probably change their life right yeah. and make them yeah. want to like do good like so if you get a mm-hmm. good report card right. you're going to get the ice cream sundae but i do have to share a very sad story that's going to get me emotional Uh-oh. but it was the last night and we did a birthday cake for all the kids and we we said to one of the little boys i said to him okay make a wish and you know all of our kids, especially kids that live in this area. I want an iPad. Yeah. I want an iPhone. I want a new car. Uh, right. <laughs> Give me a Porsche. Oh. He he pulled me down. He goes, I just want my mommy to come home. <sighs> and that's all that they want is they just you know we take for granted. Our kids take for granted that we are here every day. We might work. We might be single moms, but they know that they're coming home. Show up to a home for parents with parents. These kids don't have that. Mm-hmm. So if people can just show up for them whether it's a cash donation, which is always helpful, but just showing up for them in one way or another, that's what they need. Yep. And being dependable. Yep. Yeah. Being dependable. Yep. Absolutely. And keeping right. that word. If you say you're going to be there, then be there. And do you have any examples of people that you know that have done that? Or is, I just besides mentioned. Besides you two? Yes. No, I, well, I just No, we have, we have yeah, gotten right. calls. So, you know, <laughs> okay. a lot of people that and were at I, Mark and Jennifer's home are now calling and saying, hey, can we have the volunteer they made a connection? Right. We want to continue and, to be involved. The two girls that showed up, Jen referenced them earlier, but on, on uh, Thursday we were, you know, the office was open again. We were just trying to get, you know, back on our feet. And two of the girls showed up and said, hey, we were at Mark and Jen's house. We really, you know, um, fell in love with these kids. We made mm-hmm. a pinky promise that we would come visit them. Is it okay if we go over to the home and see them? So we made arrangements, you know, for them Aww. to go over and see the kids. And were the kids excited about it? And them? the kids oh. were excited, Aww. you know. Because someone pinky kept their promise. promise. Right. And, and then she said, you know, they go to go to church on Sundays. And then she's like, will you come to church with me? And it's so, so she's now going through the whole volunteer process. Aww. So she can actually really start coming over. And then she was the one that promised them the ice cream. Sunday because she wants she wants to be a mentor to these little girl to this these little girls because sure. women helping other women and seeing them and it's like if you can change one little one girl's life li- one you life made a huge yeah. difference you made a huge yeah. difference don't you it, you'd be grateful if we could save them all but even if you could change one right. child's life that's all it takes and I know my girlfriend who I you know she knows obviously because she's probably watching it's definitely changed her. Oh, I'm sure. It's amazing and how much. And that connection could last a lifetime. De- and I, I know for a fact it will. Oh, so wow. It's great. That's so. fantastic. Now I'm tearing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other thing I want to say, because you okay. asked what can people do. Right. Come see the village. Okay. Jen and I were that. talking about this before. So you, people that are listening to us, watching us on Facebook, we're telling you about it. You probably have some vision in your head of what this is like. and But you have, you have to, to come. see it. Okay. Because well, when where you exactly see, is it? So we're in Coconut Creek. Okay. We're right off of um, Lions Road and the Sawgrass. So we're right okay. on the border of, you know, Boca, Palm Beach, and, and Broward. Okay. Um, but you, we can't paint the right picture. When you, you, when you come it. and you see it and you see the kids just being kids, just doing things that kids do, riding their bikes after school, playing basketball, sitting at the table doing homework, and you see genuine smiles on their faces and you see the interaction with the adults in their lives... It really um, makes a huge and for those moms impression. and dads whose kids have gone off to school and you're feeling a little bit of a void, this there would be a great, that's a great way idea. Too. We have a yeah. lot of I, well, I, yeah. yeah. I became depressed yeah. when my kids left for school. Yeah. So if, if I had known about something like this, yeah. it would have helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because and like some people helping... will say, like, I'm not good with kids, but I want to help. We need help in our office. So you okay. know, maybe oh. you don't want to okay. interact with a child, but you want to help the kids. Helping us in an administrative capacity is a possibility. So okay. I just want to so keep painting the picture do, for people of right. what you can anything do. That, yeah. Yeah. And does someone need an appointment to come and check out the place? Or they can show up. I mean, okay. typically we have um, our administrative building is open Monday through Friday. Typically by eight thirty, somebody's in the office till at least five five thirty. Okay. So if they don't have an appointment, they can show up. I can't promise that somebody's going to be able to sit with them at that moment. Like mm-hmm. our volunteer person will be able to sit with them at that moment, but somebody will talk to them. Okay. And tell them and show them the village and at least give them, you know, um, some exposure, right. and then we'll get them set up for, for whatever it is they want to do. Okay, I think you're going to change lives, not only of the kids, but of people that volunteer, because like I said, you make a connection like this, and it'll last a lifetime. Yeah, It'll be Absolutely. like a family, I yeah. guess. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. some of our mentors, when we match them, when the kids turn into adults, they maintain mm-hmm. that relationship. So yeah. I have um, a young man who is, he's a Broward, he works for Broward Sheriff's Office. Um, he um, lives in the village. Um, he um, not only did he put himself through 
the program to become an officer. But at the same time, one of his sisters who lived at the village as well didn't fare as well as, as he did. And she got into some drug issues and okay. she had a son. And the state was going to take her, her son away. And he said, no, he stepped up. And he took in oh my his gosh. nephew, who he then adopted. Oh. But he, we, he, he had a mentor that we had matched him with when he was 11 years old. And they maintained their relationship. Um, Freddie was um, in Michael's wedding um, when they got oh. married. And last wow. year, a year, two years ago at our gala, Freddie was our guest speaker. And he stood up and told everybody that was at our gala that he was officially changing his last name oh. to Davis because his mentor was his father figure. Yeah. And as an adult, Thanks. he was making that decision. Um, so, you know, the, you say these, these relationships last a lifetime. They, they really do. And yeah. they really make a huge difference. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Anything else you two want to say? Our, our local heroes for, uh, for taking these kids in and shedding all this light on their story. I think you've helped them immensely. I think they've helped us immensely. Well, I mean, see, that, the, just like that principal it, said, the kids yeah. think they need us, but we need them more than it, it was. It was a great experience. The, we want to thank the community, thank all the people who came to help. We want to thank all the great people at SOS and all the, the hard job that they do. It's really, it's really a thankless right. job, the people who work there. Right, sure. There's nobody there to say thank you. And right. to thank you to all the house parents and all the staff that work there. Mm -hmm. They really have done uh, do an amazing job every day, day in and day out. And it's just great to be part of it. And thank you very much for having us today. Well, thank, thank you. you. And all you Becky and Boca followers, you better come through for me. Come on. This is a great thing. Thank you. Thank and you. and oh, I want to, they've heard it from me a hundred times, but I just want to say a personal thank you to Mark and Jennifer, because we definitely would not have made it through Irma alive if, uh, if it wasn't for right. them. And they're yeah. our heroes. So oh, thank you. Our pleasure. Thank Absolutely. You. Okay, so um, watch my social media. I'm going to be posting all of these links, all the different ways you can reach them and things you can do and message me. And uh, I'll put you in touch with the right people because this is a wonderful thing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Mark Bell. Thank you. Our local heroes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you, Jillian, for everything you do at the uh, SOS home because, I, I mean, it's just wonderful. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Tune in next week for the Becky and Boca Show. We'll see you then. Watching and listening to the Becky and Boca Show. Tune in every Thursday night at 6 p.m. to discover all the ways to spoil yourself and have a good time in beautiful Boca Raton. See you next week.